Hey kids, John here. Wanted to talk about range a little bit. Okay. This is my Stombi VR2 large bell gold plate with a flex mouthpiece that's an S14 and a speed of sound backbore or a VS backbore. That's my normal commercial rig. This is the first instrument I ever played on. It's an old Ambassador Cornet. This literally is my first instrument and it was put in the case in the 70s sometime and there's the masking tape to keep the spit valve closed. So I played a double C on both. Range isn't about equipment. Now let's get that out of the way. Range is about your discovery of how to create range. Yes, you can play maybe easier on different equipment. You will have to find out what equipment works for you as a player. But when you're trying to increase range, the first thing you should do is work on your range as opposed to going out and buying another instrument or another mouthpiece. What mouthpiece is this that I'm playing on? All right, it's a Stombi prototype. It's the only one like it. Cornet mouthpiece with approximately the same basic setup as a 3D, as like a Bach 3D. It's not shallow. Equipment, out of the way. What are we doing with range? Range is about controlling embouchure, con controlling your buzz, and controlling the airstream. All these things come together and learning to support the buzz with both the airstream and the embouchure is the key to you learning to play in the upper register. Airstream is very important here. I advocate that the tongue moves in the mouth when you're going up and down. If you look at a video that's out on YouTube, it shows an x-ray of a trumpet player playing and they're sitting as a profile and they're playing. Even though they're slurring, you will note as they activate the beginning of each note, the tongue moves. It arches in the mouth, even though they're slurring. The tongue doesn't stay at that position, but it did arch for a second and activate the slur. If you read the Earl D. Irons book, that book talks about tongue arch. I advocate that as a concept of how we create different pitches. All right, I'm not gonna go into in depth talking about tongue arch because you will have to discover what works for you. There are those that are going to argue that their tongue doesn't move. I'm just saying the tongue is moving. All right, so for range, in order to play in the upper register, you must play in the upper register. One of the best exercises you can do are lip flexibilities and velocity studies, or lip slurs, okay? I have an entire video discussing lip slurs, but for the young player, two and three note lip slurs, low F sharp to C sharp. And then you go up chromatically, you've got two notes, so you end up on so your G middle staff is your highest note. Then when you add another note above that in the overtone series, you end up on a C, you end up with an octave. Now, if all you've got is a C in the staff, if that's where you're at, you're this young player just starting, and that's the only note you got, go back down and add another note. is a B flat underneath that C. Activate some air as you go up. Smack that and maybe, just maybe, when you get up to what you're doing is you're training your body to do an isometric surge. That may help you pop that note out. A few things are all of a sudden coming together in a single moment 
that may help you get that note to come out. And the same thing can be used in the upper register. You can do an extra push and, and bear down a little bit and use a little bit more air. The ultimate goal is to not do that. Once you've touched that note and you've actually are repeating that next note, then try and back off and play it like the rest of the notes. Learn how to control your air and make it happen. Go to the highest note that you can play and, and try and activate the next note by using a little bit more air. Don't jam the horn into your face. That, don't do that. The other thing you should be doing is you should be running scales and patterns, different kinds of patterns, up and down as high as you can go. And let's say you've got a high C, that's, your, that's it. I can play a high C. All right, so challenge that high C by going one note higher. So each scale, play to the high C and then one more note above it, even if it's only a half step. I'm playing all my major scales and I'm going to my highest note and I'm trying to play one more note above it, whether it's a full step or a half step. Your highest note's gonna become easier because you're trying for that harder note that's above it, okay? And then if you look at my scale study video, it talks about playing scales different ways. Tongue them, slur them, all right? Put them in thirds, put them in, make a pattern. If you're an advanced player, take these scales all the way up to where you have your register challenged. Let's say a double G. So if you're on a C scale, take it up to the double G. Not so bad, so keep going. Hey, I got a G sharp. Okay, keep going. Say that double B flat is as high as I can go. So when I go to the E scale, I'll just go to the E. And then I'll go to the F. And then I'll go to the F sharp. And then I'll go to the G. And then I'll go to the A flat again. I've already been there once. Now I'm going there twice. And then I'll go to the A again. No, it's not pretty. It's a range study. There's my double B flat. I got it. Hooray, good for me. And then if you got it, then go one more. If that's your register, okay, here we I gotta go there. Oh, I got the B. I got to go to a C now. Go until you run out of notes. That's the only way you're going to keep what's below it. This is a register you're reaching for. This is the register you're like, Ugh. but what's below it gets so much stronger and so much more focused and so much easier to play. So I got to go to a C now.
And we could go to the C sharp. I'm not going to bother, okay? Let's not waste time. But I'd go to a C sharp. If I get that, I go to a D, okay? And again, this is my ambassador cornet from probably 1960, who knows what, five. Arpeggios, next thing to practice. You can tongue them, you can slur them. Again, going back to the young player, if your range is only in the staff, every arpeggio you play, you should take it to at least the top of your register and try and go beyond. So if you're only at a G and at the top of the staff, just at the, the above the top line, So now we go chromatically. Pop it a little bit. You're getting above where you normally can play. Pop that top note. And for the more advanced player, and then slur them. I'm starting to activate my air on a note that I know I can play, and then I push towards the note that's the next note that's hard for me to play. And you can feel the isometric surge that's happening in your abdomen. You have to move air. Okay, so challenge your range. Challenge your range. Don't just play the same exercises up to the point you can. It's challenging my muscles. It's challenging my focus. It's challenging all the things that I have to do to activate those notes. Okay, so that's arpeggios. Play them out to their logical conclusion, all the way up as high as you can go. One more thing, chords. C, E, G, B natural, D, B, G, E, C, okay? That's a major nine. I added a raised 11. Challenge your chord knowledge as well, all right? So my recipe for maintaining and gaining your range is you're going to have to discover how to do it. You're going to have to do different exercises to learn how to do it and to get control over it. And once you start to get control over it, you're going to have to learn how to maintain and continue to try and move forward. Flexibility studies are awesome. They really help you focus. They're amazing tools. Use them three days a week, two days a week I do scales and I would alter those scales. You should learn your major, all three forms of the minor and that's natural, harmonic and melodic minor. And then after that, I would learn diminished and then whole tone and then the blues. That gives you seven scales, an amazing, an amazing arsenal. And if you're wondering what chords are, get a chord book, learn your chords, understand what quality they are. But take all of that, that's five days a week. If we're practicing seven days a week, I've got, I've got three days a week where I'm playing flexi flexibility studies, I'm playing scales two days a week, okay? And I'm taking them all the way out to my range. Then two more days a week, I would play arpeggios and the other one, chords. If you mix up your practice with range, and those items, flexibility, scales, chords, arpeggios. You're gonna be killing it. Expand your range on everything you're practicing. Range is discovery. Good luck. Till next time, take it easy kids.